Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, you asked for it, you got it, the French Baroque music box featuring Jean-Francois Payard, the Jean-Francois Payard Chamber Orchestra. I don't know if you remember, but his this was the guy who popularized the Pachelbel Canon that we heard endlessly, oh my God, interminably on national public radio, especially during pledge drives. And it was always, that was the Pachelbel Canon featuring the Jean-Francois Payard Chamber Orchestra under the direction of Jean-Francois Payard. And if you pledge $20 now, we will play the Pachelbel Canon again, featuring the Jean-Francois Payard Chamber Orchestra under the direction of Jean-Francois Payard. It was enough to make you want to scream. It really was. It was just horrible. But Payard was a major, major player in the popularization of Baroque music in the second half of the 20th century, which is when the Great Baroque Revival happened. It had begun earlier, but it really took off with the advent of the long playing record and of regularly constituted chamber ensembles. And this set, which contains 14 CDs, contains two CDs which are mono, which are quite, quite old from the 50s. They go back to the dawn of the, of the Baroque revival. He never played on period instruments. He did pay attention to them once in a while. I mean, to the things that the period people discovered because, you know, it wasn't a period discovery. You know, 99.9% .9 of what Baroque music performance was had nothing to do with period instruments. It had to do with learning how to perform Baroque music properly. So it didn't matter what instrument you used. What mattered is whether you, you studied the performance techniques of the era. Um, the instruments only came later, so I wouldn't worry about those. Um, these are stylish and lovely performances of a wide variety of music, and we'll talk about it a little bit, and we shall see what we have. You're ready? First, Jean-Marie Leclerc. Now, Leclerc was a late Baroque guy. He died in, what, 1764? So he was sort of contemporary with Handel in those period, in those people. Uh, a late Baroque French master. He was a violinist. And we have here his concerti, Opus 7 and Opus 10. They are lovely, stylish, intelligent, melodic, French, somewhat frilly and fluffy. His violin sonatas are also very beautiful. He was, he was a fine composer. So that's discs one, two, and part of disc three. You also get the Michel Corette Flute Concerto Number no. 6 in E minor, the Michel Blavé Flute Concerto in A minor, Jean-Christophe Naudot Flute Concerto in C major. See, French were flute people. I know we all talk about, you know, Frederick the Great played the flute, so there was tons of flute stuff in Prussia when C.P.E. Bach was there, but France was flute central, also harp central, even though those instruments were generally circulating. So you're going to get a lot of flute music and you got to really like the flute if you're going to like French Baroque stuff. Then we have Couperin, Les Nations Sonades Ensuite de Symphonies en Trio. This is one of those wonderful, you know, internationally flavored assemblages of pieces. Um, you know, Telemann did all that stuff too with, you know, the tastes of different nations and dances Baroque dances all represented the taste of different nations, or the standard dance, the Allemand, the Courant, the Gigue, the Saraband. It was, you know, English and French and German and Italian or Spanish. You know, it was, it was a, a an international United Nations. So you have four ordres, four groups of dances. One is French, one is Spanish, one is l'Imperial whatever that was, the country of Imperial, and le, le Piemontoise. Piedmont in northern Italy. Yeah, so that's really cool. And then you have the Parnasse or the Apotheosis of Corelli from Les Goûts Réunis, from the unified tastes of all the nations. Then we have Jacques Aubert, Concert à Quatre Violons in G minor, four violin concerto, quadruple violin concerto. And Antoine d'Auvergne, Troisième Concert de Symphonie à Quatre Parts in B minor. That's symphonies in three parts. Four parts, pardon me, in a B minor. Then we've got Marc Antoine Charpentier, who everybody knows and loves. Um, some instrumental pieces and his Francois, Francois Couperin's Apatheos de Lully. These were memorial pieces you know, written in memory of a, commemorating a great musician for ensembles of various types. And Rameau, yes, the six sextets. 
six concerts en sex tour, which are, I mean, it's Rameau. Rameau is great no matter what he does. He's fantastic. These are all individual movements, suites of dances, that sort of thing. You know, they're just delicious, delightful, the lovely, endless fun. Um, Michel Richard de Lalande. He lived from 17, oh, 1657 to 1726. Now, this is quite a collection. As all this stuff is for, the, for Versailles, for the king's entertainment. So it's light music. It's fluffy and really delicious. You know, Moray, who wrote the symphonies and fanfares for the King's Supper, it had the masterpiece theater theme. Remember that? That was one of those things. So we have de Lalande, his symphonies for the suppers of the king. Now, symphonies, in this case, does not mean a symphony like, you know, we're used to having a symphony. It just means, you know, ensemble pieces of various kinds. So you've got all kinds of suites of stuff for various, for, let's see, bassoons and flutes and oboes and trumpets and violins and cellos and a harpsichord. Then we've got Mouret, the masterpiece theater guy. We have symphonies for violins and oboes and hunting horns because horns in those days were corps de chasse. They were hunting horns. And more courette, and then some rameau. Oh, the hunting scene from Hippolyte et Arissi, because hunting scenes were a big deal, as they were for everybody in those days. Haydn wrote numerous hunting scenes. Beethoven has a hunt flitting through the scherzo of his pastoral symphony, remember? da 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 ba da 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 François Francoeur, symphonies for the Royal Festival de let's see, Monseigneur le Comte d'Artois from 1773. And then Moray, fanfares for trumpets, timpani, violins, and oboes. Yes, of course. I think the Masterpiece Theater stuff is in there somewhere. Um, but that disc was originally on Nonsuch, the Masterpiece Theater one, in case you're curious. Um, and then we have, at least in, in the United States, that's how it showed up. Um, Lully, the symphonies from, oh, the suite from his opera Amadis. And then we've got Anonymous Lully's Disciple. He wrote a suite Francaise. And uh, André Joseph Exodes, a trio sonata, and more Lully, Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme, Minuet, not Richard Strauss's Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme. Same story, different composer. Uh, and then a divertissement by Corette. And then let's see what have we got here. Philidor composer and chess champion. He was a famous chess guy. Uh, we've got the Gavotte des Festins, Les Echos de Jupiter, and Le Marche des Dragons du Roi. Yeah, okay. This is all little fun Baroque things. I mean, we don't have to talk about every one of them, do we? I mean, I just love these, but my French isn't good enough to like put up with all this stuff. My God, there's tons of it. Um, really delightful discs. Then we've got four French cantatas for baritone here on disc 12 by Courbois, Boismortier, André Campra, and Remo. And finally, two discs of the mono recordings that I mentioned, which lets you hear the Baroque revival in its infancy. Now, let's just talk about the performances. They are not going to win any awards for authenticity. They are stylish. They're warm. They're enjoyable. The music is unfailingly pleasant. It's not deep. It isn't, it isn't heavy duty. 14 discs of it is probably as much as anybody needs, unless you're really hooked. And if you're really hooked, then you'll know how to pursue the highways and byways of the French Baroque in more detail. But this is a good, solid, enjoyable box of French Baroque music, giving you a taste you know, an amuse-bouche, you know, if you want to call it that, an appetizer, and an introduction to a zillion names you never heard of. Um, and they all kind of sound the same, or a lot of them do, frankly, between us, right? Entre nous. But yeah, fun stuff and well worth hearing. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.